Now on to Facebook now, a follow-up to that breaking story we brought you last night, Facebook's biggest acquisition ever. The social networking giant will pay $16 billion for the mobile messaging app, WhatsApp, sending Facebook shares to an all-time high today, up more than 2%. Julia Borston now on what exactly WhatsApp does, who's behind it, and why Facebook has hit the like button. With WhatsApp, Facebook will become the biggest mobile messaging company in the world. WhatsApp handles nearly as many text messages as the telecom industry's entire $100 billion text messaging business. The app sends text messages, photos and video to anyone else with the app without carrier fees. It's free for the first year, then charges 99 cents annually. No word on how many users pay and it does not include ads. CEO Mark Zuckerberg stressed the importance of WhatsApp's scale with 450 million monthly active users and unusually high engagement. 70% use the service every day and its growth rate is breaking records, doubling its users in the past year. Services in the world that have a billion people using them are all incredibly valuable. And um, from, that, from that perspective, you know, it, it's, we just think that and the growth rate that they have today um, and the monetization model that's early but is promising and in place that they have, um, we see a pretty clear trajectory ahead and we were just very excited to work together on this. The big question is whether Facebook can make enough money from WhatsApp to justify its jaw-dropping price tag. Though to put that price tag in context, Twitter has about half the monthly active users as WhatsApp, but its market cap is about twice WhatsApp's valuation. The strategic rationale for this acquisition is actually quite sound. This is ultimately about uh, grabbing more mindshare on mobile and grabbing more real estate on, uh, on mobile, very limited real estate, I might add. And also, in many ways, a defensive move because uh, there is speculation that Google at one point had wanted to buy WhatsApp for about $10 billion. One thing's for sure, WhatsApp sale is creating some billionaires. Founder Jan Kuhn, a Ukrainian immigrant who created the service to communicate for free with friends back home, is worth an estimated $6.8 billion. Quite the rags to riches story, he signed the paperwork selling the company against the front door of the welfare office where his family used to collect food stamps. He's not the only one. Co-founder Brian Acton is worth about $3 billion and WhatsApp's only venture investor, Sequoia Capital, stands to make about $3.5 billion. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Julia Borston in Los Angeles. What a story. But how lucrative will this deal be for Facebook? Will it ever generate enough money to justify the price that Facebook paid for it? That's what Julia asked. Let's get some answers now from Scott Kessler. He's the Internet Equity Analyst at S&P Capital IQ. Uh, would you bet against Facebook, Scott? Would you bet against Zuckerberg on this? Well, Tyler, it's hard really to question uh, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg at this point. They've both been so successful over the last year or two. The stock is up almost 150 percent just over the last year. However, and I say however, it does seem like even though a lot of people are rationalizing um, the merit of this transaction, indicating that mobile is uh, very important to Facebook and WhatsApp is a leader in mobile messaging, the reality is twofold, we think. Number one, we wonder how sustainable WhatsApp's growth and leadership in mobile messaging is going to be. And then secondly, $19 billion, we had to go back a long ways to see an Internet deal that was valued at that level. What, what is their revenue stream here? They, they give away their service for the first year for nothing, and then they charge 99 cents a year. So unless they've got something else up their sleeve or intend to raise prices, uh, doesn't that put a cap on the amount of money they can generate? Well, Tyler, the way that we think about this is, on one hand, it's pretty obvious. The revenue base at this point is probably de minimis. It's a freemium model. People sign up for free and then pay over time. But it's only a dollar a year. So even if every registered user were paying a dollar a year right now, that's obviously only $450 million in revenue when you're talking about a $19 billion company. In so, addition so where's to that, the rabbit it's in pretty the hat, obvious Scott? that advertising, I'm sorry, what was that? Where's the rabbit in the hat? I think the rabbit in the hat is something that Julia alluded to that Mark Zuckerberg kind of referenced almost as an aside, which is 
If you look at WhatsApp and you look at the global network for SMS or text messaging, they essentially carry the same volume of messages at this point. If you look at the SMS opportunity from a revenue perspective, telecommunications companies around the world are generating $100 billion a year from those services. And so over time, we think it makes sense for WhatsApp and Facebook to look at that opportunity as well. But what's interesting is it doesn't seem like either company is particularly interested in monetization right now. It's all about the land grab to, as Mark Zuckerberg indicated, a billion users around the world. We'll figure out how to make money on it later, I guess, is the, is the message there. Would you buy uh, Facebook at its current price? So, Tyra, we have a hold recommendation on Facebook shares. Our 12-month target price is $72. Basically, we think Facebook has done a tremendous job of executing over the past year, particularly with respect to the mobile opportunity. But we think a lot of the good news is priced into the stock at this point. All right, Scott, thank you very much. We appreciate your being with us tonight. Scott Kessler is the Internet Equity Analyst at S&P Capital IQ.